Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Shortly after Elizabeth died, I got a call from her husband, mm -hmm. Mark Cummings, said I've got a strange letter, I had a strange phone call, said he, from a nurse in Seattle who was in Elizabeth's distant healing program. And the nurse told Mark that she had a very clear dream from Elizabeth. This is perhaps two weeks after Elizabeth's dream. Mm -hmm. and After Elizabeth died. Died. Yeah. The, the nurse told Mark that I have a call from Elizabeth and she has a message f for you. And Mark said, well, what's the message? And she said, I don't know because it's in Russian. <laughs> and Mark said, do you speak Russian? And she said, no, I don't speak Russian at all. But Elizabeth was so insistent that she gave me the message in small little groups, one syllable at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'll send you a letter. And that did occur. Mm -hmm. But the nurse insisted that she spoke no language besides English, certainly not Russian, and she couldn't understand the Russian. So Elizabeth broke it up into syllable-sized pieces. Yeah. And then Mark called me when he got the letter mm -hmm. and said, can you make any sense out of that? Because I do, I do speak a little Russian, not mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I looked at the, this letter, and it was like uh, code groups. You have four little code groups, four little s syllables, mm -hmm. and then four more syllables, one underneath each, each other. And the top group said in Russian, La uh, vishu you, I see, I see you. And the bottom group said something like, I adore you. And I was, I was able to, mm -hmm. to translate that. But uh, this was sent, was translated by this non-Russian speaking woman mm -hmm. and the letter was sent to Mark. Mm -hmm. well, and it's the kind of thing that Elizabeth would do. Mm -hmm. She could have said, call my husband and tell him I love him. That, that would be, the, that's what an ordinary typical person. Typical mediumistic communication. And nobody yeah. would believe it. Yeah. But uh, it would take a really very dedicated, focused person to parse this Russian into something that her friend would take the trouble to write down and, and then send out. To communicate out. Uh, through a medium, that's quite extraordinary. Because it would be very hard to say uh, that that's super psi, because there would be no, that is, there's no, no hand, that is, skeptics or parapsychologists who don't accept survival say that it's just some kind of super telepathy or super clairvoyance. Yeah, which is impressive in and of itself. But, but there's, there's sort of no handle here to make the non-Russian speaking woman parse of ru two Russian sentences yeah. into English. Mm -hmm. So I find that a particularly convincing mm -hmm. uh, kind of event. I know that there are probably dozens of other stories like this that uh, are centered around communications from Elizabeth, and I hope someday to pull them together and do an interview or a program just on that. But one of the things that comes through that people have told me is that not only are these communications evidential, but as you experience that sense of light, uh, that oftentimes when Elizabeth now manifests from the other side, people feel an overpowering sense of love. They certainly do.